Hey, welcome back. This is M-Dog. I wanted to put together a short video, <laughs> short, quote, quote unquote, about this new map, the Norwegian Sea. And just to be clear, this first video that I'm doing, w taking a step back and just trying to provide some helpful initial feedback on putting gear together here, uh, how to approach the map is strictly for beginners. If you have already been fishing here, you already know past the knowledge that I'll be sharing during this video. At least I would anticipate. I just want to be clear what you're what you're in for here is um, hopefully uh, a helpful guide to just the very basics of gear and how to fish. I mean, one of the things that I want to do is just make sure that if you're completely new to this map or still fairly new to this game, I show you how to do the pilkering technique as well as the jig step, at least how I tend to do it on this new map. So that's the goal. Um, so let's just quickly run through some of this. When you first get to the map, a couple of things, administration building here. This is where you want to get your map uh, of the, the map of the sea. This is definitely something you want. Uh, it's 100 silver, but you need to be able to see what the map looks like. So you're going to have to buy this. Definitely recommend you buy this. The other uh, item in here, this book, I definitely do not recommend you buy. However, this is your personal decision. This is obviously a huge silver sink, 10,000 silver. And it was really just for people when the game, when the map first came out. Some people maybe had tons of silver saved up over the years. And this just gives them a shortcut. To be clear, this immediately puts you at 30% on the marine fishing skill, the new skill line introduced with this map. And yet 10,000 is a ton of silver for something that's not hard to do yourself with just putting a little bit of time. The, thir the zero to 30% development of this skill is the fastest. As we all know, developing your skill leveling up past 30, or the higher you get, the longer it tends to take. So this is strictly a convenience item and not something I would recommend. You'll be able to catch plenty of fish without shortcutting to 30%. That's just my opinion. Everyone has to make their own. That's my feedback on it. Uh, so now that we do have a map, we can hit M and see how huge this first saltwater sea map is in Russian Fishing 4. The second thing I want to briefly touch on is the new skill category that I mentioned before, Marine Fishing. I've just hit 50% as of our stream last night. It's very exciting. Caught a really big halibut. There's a video of that on my YouTube channel. Feel free to check it out. Well, it's not on there yet. It probably will be by the time you see this video. <laughs> anyway, um, these are where I have points. Feel free to copy if you want to. Recognize that some of these points are shared points, like light and heavy conventional reels. When you first get here, you'll probably still be using a spinning reel, unless you have already purchased a conventional reel, so that's not as important. What matters more is the points in the spinning reel. I would suggest points in the use of the pilker rod. You're going to be using a pilker rod for a long time. You don't open up light boat rods till 55, and even more importantly, you don't open up medium fish uh, rods till 75%. I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe when you first get here, these are the four things that are available to you. Spinning reel, of course, that's across so many different of the skills we have in the game. Pilker rods, pilker rigs, and marine jigging rigs. So that's why I'm basing the types of fishing we're going to do on these specific um, skills because I think even at 0% you can do these things. I think I remember that I had to level up first to unlock fillet rigs. So we're not going to even talk about fishing fillet rigs during this video. Hopefully we'll do a follow-up video down the line as we move down into the points. Okay, so um, I want to show you a couple of different pieces of gear here. Again, feel free to pause, take pictures, whatever, if you're wanting to get further information about how I've set my stuff up. Now, this is um, the first rod that I purchased upon getting here. So I'm really just focusing on the rod here. 
It has a load capacity of 68 kilos. So I felt like, hey, I can grow into that. It's big enough to go to 60 kilos right off the bat, even if the reel I'm using might not fully appreciate that much power. Um, the rod does not have any bonuses, which means the cost wasn't as high as some of the other rods. Uh, it's got a really healthy test range. In fact, the only way to get a healthier test range is getting up into the boat boat rods, I believe. But that test range is important because later we're going to be able to fish with really big fishing components, lures, other things. So right now we just want to give us as much room as possible. Okay. So I went with the Ocean Queen. Shop around. There's lots of good rods and other people may have, you know, uh, other suggestions. When I was new to the map, I looked at the rods, decided to get this one. To be clear, this is a pilker rod. You do have to have a pilker rod, my understanding, to do any of these pilker rigs or other types of fishing we'll be doing here. So you will have to purchase this. Now, when you first get here, you'll likely be putting, um, well, whatever gear you have available. Just for example, this is a setup that is another option that you might do upon first arriving. Now, this is more conservative. Notice that the load capacity of the Salt, Salt Master Offshore 88 is only 38. So this is not near as strong a rod. However, I do have, um, before this map came out, I had uh, saved for and purchased the Cardinal 22S. It is a conventional reel. Um, I've set it up this way to show you a smaller setup. And this is what we're going to fish with today. Because I'm going to sort of assume you get here, maybe you haven't saved up tons of silver. You don't have the ability to purchase the, you know, next level tier gear that came out with this expansion. So let's use something that you might be able to realistically get. This is a cheaper pilf uh, pilker rod. I still would recommend the other one over this one because the other one grows with you a bit. But... I got this as a secondary pilker rod because I wanted to try to do some shore fishing. So I was experimenting with having two rods. That's the only reason why I got it, or I wouldn't have even purchased this rod. But I thought, hey, I'll use it. It's a cheaper example. Now, if you don't have the SAT uh, or a conventional reel, maybe you have the Rocket Jet. Maybe you have, um, you might have a Venga if you've been playing for a long time and carp fishing. Or maybe you maxed out at a Tagara. If you don't have something that has this symbol, that means that your gear is not saltwater resistant, which at least in theory means it's going to wear down faster. Can you still fish? Absolutely. I wouldn't recommend fishing with anything that doesn't have the strength of at least around the Tagara Magara area of spinning reels. Could you get away with it on a caliber 80? Yes, but you're going to just more often hit fish that are harder for you to get in. It's less and less efficient. But it's fun to fish here. So I know people will probably be stretching, you know, what they're using. And there definitely are ways to target smaller fish. The nice thing with these pilker rods, bottom line is you can put spinning reels or conventional reels or bait casting reels on them. So I could even use something like this steelhead. Now this is a, a bait casting reel. It's only got 16 max drag. Is this recommended? I wouldn't say so. It's not saltwater resistant. It's a little on the weak side, but technically I could. Um, but we're gonna do this um, with the Cardinal S. It's reasonable that someone could have this or something similar in strength, even as they first get here. Now, to show up a very conservative, to show off a conservative setup, I have this 30 kilo braided line. Notice that it's rainbow in color. That's something new with this update, which allows you to see how deep you're fishing. Um, no matter, you know, what kind of setup you're using, if you're using this line, you can see the depth in which you're fishing, which is nice. We're using shock leaders, 27 kilo. So hopefully you already know this if you're at this map but your rods should be your strongest, 38.2, followed by your reel, 21.8, followed by your line. Okay, so now we're getting off, right? So technically, because I know the max drag is 21.8, but the mech strength of the Cardinal is actually much more than that, I'm willing to stretch it a little bit, 
it just gives me a, a different way to interact with my friction brake. But the 30 kilo line and then the, the, the weakest point of the whole setup is the shock leader, 27 kilos. Again, that's based on how strong the, the, the mechanism is for the Cardinal, not just its uh, technical um, max drag. So anyway, that's, that's the setup we're going to use. Now, do I recommend getting this line? Like if you, like me, go ahead and get a nicer Pilker ride when you first start, I would also go ahead and suggest getting a really big line. Even if your leader is going to be a lot smaller, see, this is 60 kilo line. I think this is a good starting off point and you can use the 60 kilo shock leader, but you could also go down to 30 or whatever based on how much strength. But the line, I've done a ton of fishing with this line and it's only at one and a half percent wear. So you just have to make a decision. Do you want to get a line you can grow into and make up for it with your smaller leader? Or do you want to get a line that more represents how much strength you can use right now and then make sure your leader is just under that? Hopefully that all makes sense. If you go to the tackle store, which I'll do really quick, they've put almost everything you need in this marine tackle category. This shows you all the pilker rods, the boat rods, the lures, everything you need in for this update, except the line is still over here under braided line. And this is the line I was talking about. I haven't tested any of the other new line. I'm sure it's great as well, but I like having the depth that the rainbow line shows, the multicolor. Notice that you can get it in, um, in 300 meter. This is the cheapest way to get it. And I do have one of these. In fact, we're using it. So I'm actually sacrificing real, how much line I have on my cardinal reel, because it could actually fit 500 meters. But this is, I wanted to show sort of the cheapest way to get into this sort of this fishing. So 265, if you don't have a conventional reel or you don't have a, reel, a spinning reel that has a really big spool, then it might make sense to start off with this size line. You just need to look at your setup and see how much line you could fit. So like on the Vanga, we can get 430 meters using 0.54 millimeter line. If we used smaller line that's not quite as strong, we'd get more on the reel, right? But you're only going to get more on the reel if the length of the line is actually greater than or equal to. So you just kind of have to keep all that in mind. So that's the line. Just, you know, you're just making a decision on, do you want to get what you can just, what you can use right now? Or do you want to get what you can use down the line and kind of grow into it? If you're getting smaller line, that's 200 and something silver, I would say just go ahead and get what makes sense for you right now. And then a liter slightly under that, because that's not much silver. But if your spool is big enough for a 600 or 1200 meter spool, that's getting into some pretty serious money. So then you maybe think through like, okay, how do I want to do this? Notice there's uh, lots of new hooks in this update. They're showing you both older hooks that are relevant to this type of fishing and new equipment that's in here. Some of this you're not going to be able to use till you get way down in the marine fishing skill line. All right, here's some soft lures, some new regular lures or pilk pilking lures, pilker lures. Um, giant shads, a lot of this are attractants and stuff that you don't need to get into in the beginning at least. Here are the leaders. I have just been using shock leaders, Some people, which these are mono leaders. If you see the material they're made is nylon. Some people have experimented with fluorocarbon and other stuff. Remember, you can create your own leaders here as well. There's different um, material now that you can do. But if you want to do the easy, quick way, like I've done at least starting out, just find how much strength you want to have on your leader from the store and base your setup around that in terms of what strength line and, and all that you want. So shock leader is what I've been using. So let's get out the setup that we're going to use here. All right. So when we first start in the map, we can do pilka rig and marine lure jigging rig. Well, let's start with pilka rig. Let's find a reasonable size lure, maybe this bond 12501. There's a lot of new lures and, and it seems like all of them work to one degree or another. There's some standouts, but we're not going to get into that because lure and bait preferences change. But I'm going to go for this 125 gram. If you're really going for smaller fish, you can even go down to the 70 gram. These work really well as also, uh, but we'll start with 125. Now, as you level up further, you'll be able to use auxiliary hooks, but you're not going to be able to do that in the beginning. So we'll skip it. 
Same thing, as you level up further in marine fishing, you'll be able to use all of these attractions, both at the base as well as at the hook, which I have some of these, but we're not gonna use these. Now, real quick, let's talk about fillets. Actually, let's get out on the boat and start heading out there, and then we'll talk about fillets. All right, so we kind of spawn in this area. I showed you administration shop, the tackle store. Really quick, let's look over here to see where you buy the boat tickets. So right here, you can get boat tickets. Currently, they're on sale for gold or, you know, normal price on silver. I think you always at least want to get two-day tickets, and you always want to have backups in your inventory. Just don't do that to yourself. Make sure you've got backups. Is it expensive? Yes. Thankfully, you can make more than that in a trip, you know, as you're getting a decent bite rate and stuff. But um, it's just a, you know, pricey boat tickets. That's just the way it is. And then we can look at the cafe right over here. Some good start cart cafe orders. So looking at this, I like going for European places. That wouldn't be a bad one to go for. Mackerel are pretty easy. Uh, but this is asking for big mackerel. So you'd have to really like get in a groove with big mackerel. So that's the cafe. This is the fish market where you're going to sell your fish if they don't meet cafe orders. This is an important place here, Bjorn's Bait Shop. Now, um, these are the three things you can get with silver here. Lugworm, Neurosis, and Shrimp. But to use those, that would be more like shore fishing, or you could try using it. I just, I'm not sure how advantageous it is to stock up on these in the beginning. I think going with lures and jig setups is probably a better way in the beginning based on what you're doing. You can see this bait is not cheap. But as you get higher level in the marine skill, there's going to be times where you will want to use these, potentially. Um, if you have gold and you want to get a jump start on getting like this bait, you can. But I don't think I would recommend it because this is all stuff you can create. As long as your bait harvesting has been leveled up, this is all stuff you can create. You can also make dead fish um, easily as long as your bait harvesting is there. So I don't think worth it to buy with these with gold either. So the main thing you're looking for in this bait shop are these three items. And these probably aren't even things you want to use here in the beginning. So let's get out on the, on the open map here. We're going to go to the 41 meter hole. I will say that there are tons of active spots on this map. There has been since it released. Um, you know, things do change. Uh, so I, I'm picking the 41 meter hole, which is down here around D9 and surrounding quadrants. Not because I'm saying it's, you know, always the best, but it's been healthy since the game came out, since the map came out. Um, 34 has been good. 80 has been good. 55 has been good. 75, 190. Little, I mean, I mean, there's just so many different spots that have been good and, and, in, in some ways, it's hard to find a spot that's not good for something, at least. Um, but this 41 meter hole, at least right now, feels pretty, um, a pretty good option to me for someone who's new to the map. We'll see how it goes. The main thing is just an excuse to show you how to do the uh, pilkering and jig step. All right, let's go to audio. That way we can't hear the, um, the boat engine. So let's keep heading that way. And then I want to talk to you about bait harvesting really quickly. I'm thinking about doing a series of a leveling guide. If you wanted to do your early leveling here at the Norwegian sea, it just seems like it'd be a fun thing. Not necessarily like the mo the best thing to do, but it's something you could do. As of the recording this video, things have changed that makes it a little less um, appealing because now you're limited to three trips. When it first came out, you could do unlimited trips, um, but they have removed the level requirement. So when it first came out, you could only make the trip if you were level 34 or lower. Now anyone can make the trip, but you can only do it three times. If you purchase this trip with either 1,400 silver or just under one gold, then you get all the equipment you need to fish and uh, you get for each time you purchase it you get five hours 
five real life hours. Um, and you, you know, if you log out, it pauses obviously when you come back. So it's pretty cool. You can experience it. I actually do recommend making the trip. I kind of wish I had, but when I first started playing, the trip was only available if you were sub 34 level. So I couldn't make it at least on my main account. And I wanted to just get out here fishing. So I didn't log into an alt account or something. Um, but I think it's a good idea because you get to try out some of the equipment and the gear, which might inform you a little bit more to think about like, okay, what do I actually want to buy? Like if you took this trip three times, which the, the most, the way that I would say makes sense. And I, and I hate encouraging people to spend real life money because you don't have to, but I, I think if you can afford a couple bucks or whatever 0.95 gold is, you're then you just you just make all that silver from the trip, which helps you buy, you know, or start saving towards something you want to buy once you get here. And if you do that three times, you've had 15 hours of experience fishing out here. And I think that really helps give you a, a little bit of like personal experience information on how you might want to spend your silver, what kind of equipment you might want to purchase. Because again, it's you're just using the equipment that they provide as part of the cost of renting the trip. All right, so let's just look at this. You'll see um, just below fish pieces here are some new skills. Filet of mackerel, filet of safe. This is gonna be huge. You're gonna be catching lots of mackerel, lots of safe here on the Norwegian Sea, and you're gonna to wanna to turn the majority of that into bait. And when you do turn it into bait, first check if it's a huge size, which means 800 to 1.5 kilos. If it is, I would go ahead and turn it into that. These don't decay in your inventory. And one day you will likely want to fish with huge fillets. And they're frankly the hardest to get because it's a specific size range. Anything else you can choose between large fillets, fillet strips, and small fillets. The Basic guideline I've been using is over five kilo safe. I typically turn into large. I think that gives you four fillets. I could be off slightly there. If it's sub five kilos, then I typically make it into fillet strips or small fillets with probably 80% of the time doing small fillets, 20% of the time doing fillet strips based on how often I use those. It is the same thing with mackerel. Same four choices, although it is different um, mackerel are different sizes than safe in terms of their average size. Mackerel tend to be smaller. Okay, so um, we're going to start off fishing without the fillet on there, but I will switch it to including fillets pretty quick because if you have bait harvesting leveled up to whatever that is, I don't know, isn't fish pieces of fish 50%? So somebody have to tell me in chat, I mean, is this 60%? Anyway, as long as you have bait harvesting leveled up high enough and you have the at least the basic tool, you don't need the professional knife, the, the basic fillet knife will work, then you can start making this bait. So it's very easy to catch the bait fish, very easy to start making it. All right, I'm going to put my retrieval speed at maximum. Again, here's the setup we're using, just very basic, just a pilker lure and that's it. We're going to cast it just off the side of the boat. Actually, I've gotten the habit of doing this. I won't do this for this video. We'll actually go out onto the, the, the boat here. <laughs> I've been fishing from my seat, unless it's a, uh, a big fish. All right, so notice that we did not anchor down. This map, this type of fishing is all about using the drifting, the natural drifting of your boat and therefore you and your line as a part of the fishing experience. All right, so we are on the bottom layer. Let's let let's reel it in till we see that there's no more slack in the line. Hopefully you can see that. Now you've got two options here for pilfering. You can actually just raise it straight up, just kind of over and over. Now so I keep saying pilfering. I will say that I think for the rest of, of, of this map's existence, it's actually perking. You can raise it up like I'm doing. We're getting perking. Actually, we just caught a fish. Or, so all I was doing is raising the mouse up and down, right? Just on my mouse pad, literally pushing it, you know, north is not the right thing, but you know what I mean, pushing it up and then bringing it back down to get that perking uh, motion. The other thing you can do is use your right mouse button. So we'll show that in just a minute. 
But as you can see, first fish comes very quickly. And this is just using a basic perking um, uh, setup with, you're gonna catch a lot of these early on, <laughs> by the way, shorthorn sculpin. It's fine, just keep leveling up your marine fishing. They're not worth a ton. You might get a cafe order or something every once in a while, but um, just keep leveling it up. Let's get our audio back up, by the way, now that we're not trying to talk over the boat engine. All right, so let's cast again. Notice I'm just, I mean, you really can just drop it right in front of you. And then you just let it free fall. This is how I do it, at least. You can cast it farther out. I just don't know that there's a lot of value in doing that, at least with these types of fishing that we're doing now. Every once in a while, you might want to hit the R button. By the way, if you're using a spinning reel, see, we caught one on the drop. And this just happens sometimes. I, I think I'm going to switch to a spinning reel just to show you this other way that actually is really nice so that you can tell if you have a, a fish on the drop. This will happen quite often, especially with these small pilker lures, the small setup approach. You're going to get crazy bite rate sometimes, and a lot of times that will be actually while it's falling into the water. Hey, there's some bait. Our first bait, right? 510 mackerel. All right, so two things real quick. Let's switch to a Tagara. Reasonable that you might have a Tagara. Let's, um, let's put our reel speed at 50. Now, I'm going to put a clip on here. So we know that we're over the 41 meter hole. So if I put the clip at 50, trying to get a background so you can actually see the, so if I put the clip at 50 here, then the lure will hit the ground before it hits the clip. The only thing I'm using the clip here for is if we get a fish on the line while the lure is dropping, that clip meter will disappear. So we don't have to sit here and hit R over and over to see if a fish is on. We just watch for that clip disappearing. Okay, so before we do that, I do want to show you the new fish, so the mackerel we just caught. All right, so again, either knife will work. Uh, it's a 510 gram mackerel. So by my, the rules that I usually follow on this, I'm going to turn this into a small fillet. We're going to make this mackerel. And then we're going to go ahead and throw it on here. Do you need to? No. You can see we're already getting a good bite rate. It's unnecessary. But just for fun, we're going to throw it on there this time and, and use that. All right, so let's use this Tagara and uh, let's watch the clip. See the clip symbol just next to the spinning line that shows how deep it is? If that clip signal disappears, we've got a fish on. Oh, it's gone. See, I hit R just to confirm. Clip disappeared. That means we've got a fish on. Another mackerel. We can put more bait on there, just keep it rolling. And you may say, well, okay, well, you're not making a lot of silver. True, we're making some experience though. And the most importantly, if you're new to the map, you're getting points in marine fishing, which, which opens up new stuff where you can target more lucrative fish. It's just something you gotta go through, right? All right, so let's take the mackerel off for a minute. Let's go back to just the lure. We'll keep the Tagara on for one more cast, just so we can see that clip symbol again. But I want to show you pilking with the right mouse button versus lifting up manually like we did last time. The bite rate's so good that sometimes it's hard to actually show the technique. All right, so we're in the bottom. So we want to go ahead and close the bale, get the slack out of the line, and now we're going to hit right mouse button. Okay. So this is going to give us pilking in just a minute. There, sorry, perking. I never get the word right perking and in fact we're list, lifting it so high we're getting strong perking if you're ever having a hard time getting the strong perking another thing you can do is hold the shift down which forces the perking motion to be even more um sort of to happen more quickly and i find that that typically gets strong perking even quicker all right so i don't know if you've noticed but in the bottom left hand side of the screen, the current's kind of picking up and we no longer have movement in the bottom area. So I'm gonna actually open the bale by hitting enter and let it go all the way back down to the bottom again, movement in the bottom layer. So now we see it again. So I'm gonna close it and now we should be able to stay in the bottom layer 
while we're perking. I think I've said three different words now. Pilfering, who knows? All right, we are perking. So let's see if we can get a bite. We should be able to, no problem. Oops. The weather's changing a little bit. All right, there's a bite. All right, so we got a fish. All right, so while we are still, oh man, the seas are getting rough. All right, here's another fish type, cusk. It's a little, little baby cusk. All right, so right now, if you see the bottom right-hand side, I am facing the wind. We know that because of that white line that's on the compass, and I am facing it. Well, for what I'm going to show you next, which is the marine lure jigging rig, the other type of fishing that you can do from the start on this map, unless I've got that wrong. So same setup, except we're going to put a jig head. I'm going to choose the Fisheye Jig Series S number 5, extra large 2.0. And then you can choose all kinds of soft lures. So many things work here. Um, tiny fish, huge minnows, uh, salty fish, which is one of the new types, the uh, quickers, um, provokers. I mean, I, I haven't really tried anything that hasn't worked. Maggots, really good bite rate on maggots. But the other thing you can use is just these very cheap to make handmade rubber foam rubber fish. And I think red and yellow especially, but really any of them. So we're going to just try putting this on. If you've done any kind of lure making, one of the first things you make is oodles of these, right? Now, you'll notice I'm not high enough level to add on sea hook or gummy mask max. So eventually we'll be able to do some crazy stuff with even these jure ligging, jure, uh, lure jigging rigs. All right, so I actually don't wanna be facing the wind. So we're gonna to go to the back of the boat. Let's get our retrieval speed back up. So notice I don't have a clip anymore because you can't use a clip with a conventional reel, just the spinning reels. We're now kind of facing away from the wind. I'm gonna cast it, but not too far. And we're going to let it drop just like we did with the pilking rig. Now you can do the pilking and strong, sorry, perking and strong perking. Am I saying that right again? Pilking, strong pilking. I don't know. Anyway, you can do that like we were doing before with these uh, jigging rigs. I think it works even better when you can get a jig step. All right, so we're in the bottom layer. Here's the difference with jig step, at least as far as I'm concerned, using them. You don't get all of the slack out of the line. So I'm gonna close the bale and reel it just a little bit. And then again, we can do this manually or we can do this with the right mouse button. But you can see I'm actually, well, we got a fish so fast you couldn't see, but I was actually pulling the line through the slack versus it having it taut or tight where we were getting uh, the other type. But jig step will typically come up, although jig step can be more affected by the uh, how strong the tide movement is, maybe even wind. Um, at least for me, it's a little less consistent. Um, let's try it again. Let's see if we can actually see jig step. I would love to be able to show it to you both with the manual way and using the right, right mouse button. All right, we're down to 45 meters. We should be hitting the bottom. Okay, so again, we're not taking all the slack out. Already we have jig step. So above movement in the bottom layer, on the left arm, you should see both jig step and movement in the bottom layer. All right, we lost jig step. It's a little temperamental. There it is, it's back. All right, so now let's see if we can get it by using the right mouse button. You still see there's slack in the line. 
So we're likely, oh, nope, we got perking. So I guess we're just at that in between between jig step and perking. See if we can open it up again a little bit more. See if that will bring it back to jig step. So I opened up the bail. You know, it may be also the speed. I'm like, I am uh, doing it a little fast. So right now there's too much. Oh, no, we did get jigged up. So it was just enough. I thought there might've been too much slack. All right, there's a fish. Anyway, with these, um, with these marine lure jigging rigs, in my experience, jig stepping is worth doing. I think it helps. I think it helps bite rate a little bit, but if you end up perking with it, if that's just easier in the beginning, then, um, then you'll still catch fish, plenty of fish. I, I just, I like trying to jig step these, uh, these jigging rigs. All right, there's another sculpin. All right, so, you know, we've noticed, you may have noticed we've been catching a lot of small fish. So let's go to the, let's go to the 4.0 size and let's put a maggot on there. Let's just see what we catch. The wind has moved a little bit. We'll see if we can do this. Again, because we're using quote unquote beginner gear, you've just got here theoretically, I'm trying not to do the things that would more likely get you really big fish that you might not be able to handle, which that's always possible. You can always hook into a shark or a big calibit or cod or halibut or cod or something that's going to be too much. But for the most part, you can decrease the amount of those catches by using these smaller lures and uh, these particular approaches. All right, that was quick, so we didn't have to jig step it long. In fact, jig step didn't even have time to show up there. So this is really what you wanna do. And, and I find it to be really fun. Obviously there's a lot of new fish species we're catching. The map is just really big. Um, I'm, I'm not gonna get into it in this video but there's reasons to fish at diff different depths based on what you're targeting. Um, so right now we're in a fairly shallow area, all things being considered. That's a really nice European place there. We'll take that. All things being considered, 41 meters is relatively shallow for this map. You know, you get well over 200 meters in some parts. So in this area, we're doing an approach where we are fishing at the bottom, but there are times and places on this map where you'll want to fish higher elevation in the water, less lower depth, higher depth. Uh, and in those cases, that's where it's really nice having this rainbow line. You can see exactly how deep it is. Stop it when you want to, and then start, you know, perking at that point. All right, let's see if we can actually get a jig step down here. Yeah, there we go. Jig step. Pilking. I'll never say it correctly, will I? All right. Catching fish. So, I, I mean, I really think this is something you can do when you first get to this map. You can get set up and start doing what I'm doing easily and start leveling up that marine that marine uh, fishing skill, the new skill that came out with this map. Oh, it's a nice sculpin, almost one and a half kilos. All right, so let's real quick go back to the Pilker rig, which is the first thing we used. Before we were using this uh, 12501, which I do like, the um, Lurkers have also been really good, both the 107, 207. So we'll use the 107 one time, and we're going to put a fillet on there. I really like using the safe fillets, and you can do strips or the small fillets. We'll show a strip one time. All right, let's cast this out here.
Somebody just caught a trophy sculpin at 3.7 kilos. That is a really nice sculpin. All right, so we're about to hit the bottom. And because we're we're not doing jig step now, so we want to go ahead and reel it in until there's no slack. And then either way we want to do it, manually or with right mouse button, start getting that perking going. Quick bite. So again, fairly small lure, but a lure that we know is very active. And we're using the strips. By the way, don't need to change hooks on these lures, at least in the beginning. I'm keeping the stock hooks. My understanding is that even the stock hooks, the new happy hooks that they came out with for this map, are five star. They're plenty nice. So um, I've just been keeping stock hooks. Some people are changing. Sometimes they want to change like the size. Hey, it's our first safe which means we can turn that into a filet. So 1.3, not the right size. Oh, it is the right size for a huge. Always check that first. So we'll make a huge filet. I'm not gonna use it to fish because that's not for this video, but I will turn it into that. All right, let's catch a couple more fish and then we're gonna wrap it up. All right, mackerel, it's pretty small. Let's just turn it into a fillet strip. All right. Such a quick bite rate. It's just really fun fishing, to be honest. Uh, I know you've probably heard this from a lot of different people, but this Norwegian Sea has really breathed a lot of fresh air into this game. Even for us old timers who have been playing for a long time, this has uh, this has been really invigorating, getting to experience the new types of fishing, all the new equipment and combinations of stuff you can use, and all the new fish species that you can target. It's been a lot of fun. Nice pollock. I'm glad we got to see a different type of fish. All right, we'll see if we have time for one more cast before our boat ticket runs out. We're gonna put the small fillet on instead of the strip and see if we can get something real quick. We may run out of time, but we'll try. All right, we did get a fish. Let's see what it is. We should be able to get it in before our time runs out. And you notice how many fish bites we've gotten on the drop before it even hits the bottom. Especially with some of these lures, that will definitely be the case. Oh, kind of cutting it close. We got 20 minutes left. If it's a safe, I think it'll be a marker at least this time. Ooh, nice haddock. Fun to see a haddock and a pollock. That is awesome. All right, so let's let it transport us back here in 10 minutes. Um, oh yeah, I, there was, we'll, we'll let this expire first. There was one more thing I was gonna point out. Um, As I have been, I've been thinking about what I was saying earlier about the line and all right, so we're going to hit cancel. So we don't renew the boat thing, which puts us right back at the starting spot. So you'll notice on this sort of beginner setup I'm using, which, you know, to call it beginner means we probably should have something more like the Tagara on there. Um, or even the Taiga C. This is another interesting reel. It is saltwater protected, uh, especially if you went for catfish before this map came out. This is one of the le least expensive options to go for catfish. It is a conventional reel. This might've been a better like starter setup kind of situation. However, 
I really don't like the 300 meter line. If you do or soon will have a, a reel that will hold more than 300 meters, like this Taiga C, for example, at this, li at this um, line diameter, it would hold 658 meters. Even the Tagara would hold 621 meters. There's no business for us having a 300 meter line, not in the Norwegian Sea. So going back to how much, I mean, it's a little bit of an upfront cost, but the first time you get something that is running on you, you'll be thankful to have at least the 600 meter line. So yeah, it's twice as much or almost twice as much silver, but it's worth it. Unless you just know that for a long period of time, you're going to be using a reel that doesn't take advantage of more line. I, I think that's, that's the way to go. Okay. So, um, I mean, we didn't make any silver cause we really didn't fish for very long, but, uh, we just kind of show you cafe wise. Those are huge mackerel. So we certainly didn't do anything here on the cafe, um, fish market. Let's see, by price, that place. One of the reasons why places are fun to go for is you can see even at a very small like marker size, moderate size, 25 silver. And the sculpin add up, especially the larger ones, that's approaching two kilos, it's 16 silver. So even that short amount of fishing with three non-markers, because we're using really small, small gear, small lures and jig, jig heads, you know, we made 81 silver pretty quickly. So there is silver to be had here, um, but it's expensive to fish here as well. So hopefully this video has been helpful to help get you started and not be at as much of a disadvantage in those early days when you're first trying to, to get, get a handle on this place. So anyway, this has been a beginner's guide to the Norwegian Sea with a special emphasis, I would say, on just how to get started with the basic two types of marine fishing you can do using the pilker rod and pilker rig, as well as the pilker rod and marine jigging rig. How to set it up, how to use those rigs in the water so that you can quickly catch fish and get on your way to leveling up marine fishing so that more and more fishing um, uh, fishing approaches are available to you. Really what I think you know, we'll see how it plays out. But I think the idea is the more rig types you unlock, the more you're able to really target different types of fish um, in, in different ways. Uh, if you haven't been here yet, you may not know this, but there are just tons of different fish and sizes of fish on this map. So a lot to look forward to if it's your first time here. As always, thank you for coming to this channel and supporting me by watching the videos here. I really appreciate it. I hope it's been helpful. If not, I hope it's been fun. And I wish you all the best tight lines in your saltwater adventures. Until next time, I am peacing out.